Good morning, everybody. How's this beautiful Sunday morning? Lots of rain this weekend and expecting lots of mosquitoes very, very soon, uh, which is not so fun. But it's good to see you guys. Thank you for joining us online. Those of you who are logging in, uh, if you will just uh, get your hearts and your minds ready for a little bit of worship and, uh, and just a good message from Josh this morning. And if you'll stand and join us in some praise this morning. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows. is finished the end is written jesus christ my living hope who could imagine who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of Step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Sound. 
If you'll turn and say good morning to each other real quick as I uh, try to <clears throat> clear my throat. I am sorry about that. I aspirated this morning, <coughs> and that is really hard to keep singing while your throat is revolting. So <laughs> uh, it is so good to see you guys. Uh, the room is full, and I see some faces I haven't seen in a while. It is so good uh, that you are here joining with us as we worship God this morning. Let us just continue on, and let's just uh, declare some victory in Jesus this morning. Precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sin And won the victory Here we go! Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever He sought me and bought me With His redeeming blood He loved me ere I knew Him And all my love is to Him power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory here we go oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me Morning. 
You may have a seat for just a moment. Thank you. And good morning, good morning. Uh, thank you for uh, being here with us. Also want to give a few shout outs for those that are joining us uh, online to, to Laura Blomgren, who had a birthday. Happy birthday to Laura, uh, to uh, Linda Hahn, and to uh, Donna Bailey, who's not feeling well and is, has really struggled with that. So we're going to pray for you, Sister Donna, uh, for, for Dana and Louise and the Rose family uh, and others joining us. Thank you for being with us. Uh, and while we're in that just thought of, of prayer, there are several prayer requests of folks that are just uh, needing a special touch from God this morning. And so uh, whether you have voiced it uh, or it's, it's on the request, if you could just pause and pray for those, uh, for Donna that's not feeling well this morning, uh, for uh, Ricky, uh, a relative of the Morellis family that's down in the valley and was in a, uh, a tragic shooting accident uh, over the last few days. Uh, and... Um, the Lord has kept him alive so that he can be a blessing to others. Uh, and uh, uh, he is about to donate, uh, the family is about to donate uh, his organs to bless eight different people. Uh, and, and so both a, a tragedy uh, for, for some and, a, a, and a, an answer to prayer for so many others. And uh, such a, a, a faith struggle there. So pray for them. Uh, Billy is just not feeling well, so praying for Billy this morning uh, and Terry and just uh, continued recovery for for her, for Katie's mom uh, with that. So if we could pray together, thank you so much for being here. I pray that uh, today that we would be awakened to God's uh, presence uh, in his spirit uh, and that we would hear clearly what he has for us this morning. I believe he does have a word for you and me. Let's pray together. God, we come together uh, because of your son, uh, because your son made a way for us where we had no way and we are grateful uh, because of the shedding of the blood of Jesus there is remission of sins, and we can, we can approach the throne of grace with confidence. And we say, hallowed be your name. We bless your name. We praise your name. We recognize uh, just a, a small bit of all who you are. We recognize that so many different things are out of our control. Uh, we recognize that we live in a broken world. <laughs> we, we need you, God. More than we realize, we need you. I pray that you would awaken our minds and our spirits uh, to your presence and to your will and to your way in these moments. That you would leave us with a taste of your goodness and your encouragement for us where we are right here today. God, I'm grateful that you know exactly where we stand. You know where we stand before you. You know where we stand emotionally and mentally and how we're out and how we would like to be here and we're not. And we can come to you with all that we are and be ministered to with the love and compassion of Jesus Christ in this moment. God, I pray specifically for these that are hurting in this moment. God, I pray for relief for Donna. I, I, I pray that you would calm her nerves. God, that you would give her rest. God, I, I, pr I pray for the family of Ricky and all that are connected. Uh, sometimes we just don't even know what to ask, and yet in the middle of this tragedy, you seem to be blessing. You seem to be drawing people into yourself, and we glorify you for that. God, I pray for, for Terry. I pray for, for Billy. that's just not feeling well this morning. I, I pray that you would, would heal physically. I pray for the person that is just tired, just worn today, that you would refresh. We declare our need for you in this moment. We position our heart in such a way to say yes in advance. It's all this in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Would you stand? Sing this as a prayer this morning. Nothing else. Jesus 
just want you. I'm not here for blessing. And I'm not here for blessing. Cause Jesus, you don't owe me anything. And more than anything that you can do, I just want you anything you can do. More than anything that you can do, I just want you. Thank you, God, that you are enough, that we don't need anything else, but we can just rely on you and call out to you and you will answer. We love you. thought that steals my breath. It's a heavy weight upon my chest. As I lie awake, you wonder what the future will hold. Help me to remember that you're in control. You're my courage when I worry in the dead of night. You're my strength cause I'm not strong enough to win this fight. You are greater than the battle raging in my mind. I will trust you, Lord. I will fear no more. I will lift my eyes. storm is not in me. You're my courage when I worry in the dead of night. You're my strength when I'm not strong enough to win this fight. You are greater than the battle raging in my mind. I will trust you, Lord. I will fear no more. No. 
victorious. Amen. You may have a seat. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. If we have any kiddos that would like to go out the back with Miss Braden, she's going to take care of those kids. Thank you all so much. So who understands the picture? Notice where home plate is. I mean, something that you've spent blood and sweat and tears and trying to to just get there i mean towards a goal or it, it could even be away from a, a habit or an addiction that you're just trying uh, to to get some success over and you try and you do all you can and you reach for it and you fall short oh man uh, i don't know about you but uh, that's frustrating uh, and it can happen in so many portions of life. Uh, and it just seems like when that happens, there's this avalanche, you know. It's more like when you're sliding in and the, the dust clears. It's, it's more like it, just all these emotions seem to flood over you in that moment. Like shame and, and, and guilt. And, and, and could you just get a little bit more? I mean, even anger and regret. And then I don't know about you, but for me, oh, this negative, discouraging self-talk starts happening. And you're just like, why? And you're, and you're so stupid. I mean, come on, let's be real, right? Uh, and you just start coming down on yourself like, uh, oh, I just can't believe it again. And then what happens? Just fear starts kind of going over you. Will I ever make it? Will I ever get past this? Will I ever go towards the goals? And this can happen in so many different areas, can it? Can I be honest? Church. You know, striving and trying to do things and just not. Relationships. Trying and trying and trying and. Your job. Even in something you say that you wish you could take back and just like a tube of toothpaste once it comes out it doesn't go back in how can you regain lost ground how can you regain lost ground you know I found some encouragement I think for all of us because I think it's something that we've all experienced maybe you're like that's a picture of me right there I could have played that person right now I, I want to encourage you this morning and begin by reading over you just a, a passage of scripture that, uh, that I went, okay, that's, that's where God's love letter speaks to me in a moment like this. And speaks to you in a moment like this. Because if it's not you today, uh, it could even be this week. It could even you, be you by the end of the day. Because how many times have we st tried our best to strive ahead and just failed and fell short of those goals? What do we do? How can we respond? How can we regain lost ground? Now, I love the scripture uh, in, in that it's just so real. It doesn't just give us a pep talk and go, oh, you shouldn't think that way, just be better. No. Lamentations 3, starting in the rawness of verse 14. I have become the laughing stock of all people. The object of their taunts all day long. This is scripture. He has filled me with bitterness. He has sated me with wormwood. He has made my teeth grind on gravel. And made me cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. I've forgotten what happiness is. So I say, my endurance has perished, and so is my hope from the Lord. Remember my affliction and my wanderings, my wormwood and my gall. My soul continually remembers it and is bowed down before me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. You know, I love that we get the full story of people just like me and you who have tried and have given it. They're all, the blood, sweat, and tears, they've tried. 
And I fell, I've fallen short. And I love that there's the hope in Scripture to go ahead and be reminded, even regardless of where you are today, to get up and keep pressing on. In fact, maybe that's what you need to hear this morning is, don't give up. Does, does somebody else understand where you are? Absolutely. In fact, God even had Jeremiah feel this, know this, and understand this. And thousands of years later, say this to us to remind us, you're not the only one. Oh, and it goes on. It doesn't end there. It's not like the end of a bad movie to where you go, oh, it's terrible. That's the end. Verse 23, 22. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. In fact, they are new every morning. Great. It's your faithfulness, God. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. In that moment, was everything fixed? No. In that moment, did they still have to deal and get up from failure? Absolutely. But in turning their eyes to the Lord there was something supernatural that happened where God strengthened, strengthened them and gave them a hope that was beyond themselves to get back up and try again. And that failure would not have the final word. Amen? Oh, thank you, God. As we continue studying through uh, the book of Joshua where we see in Joshua that he's admonished, he's encouraged, he's over and over comes back. They say, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Now, it should come to you if you keep hearing something over and over. Maybe it's something you should pay attention to. And in Joshua, we see over and over, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Now, remember what we've uncovered is that be strong is this. Keep lifting your eyesight and your confidence to the Lord. Even when you fail, even when it's not going well, even when it's, in, uh, when it's a, a victory, regardless, keep shifting your focus from what's happening here and what's happening here to what's happening in heaven. The view side of heaven. Keep shifting your faith to God. And then be courageous. What does that mean? Have your feet ready to respond to what God says. To obey to what God says. So be strong and courageous. See, at the Lord's direction, Moses gave Hosea. Did you know that was Joshua's given name? Hosea means salvation. And Moses saw in Joshua, I need to remind you, you know what Joshua stands for? Yahweh is salvation. So instead of saying, there's a salvation is coming, Hosea, he changed it to where he's saying, I want to remind you and everybody that hears and says your name. Thankfully, I got some of that in me, Joshua. You know, uh, Yahweh is salvation. He wanted to do something new. Now, maybe you just need to hear this with me. Repeat after me. New. God wanted to do something new in Hosea and remind him and everybody else that he was leading and that God would promote him to put in front of that his name was now Joshua. He was doing something new. I'm giving you a new name. It's going to be salvation is coming. He not only gave him a new name, but he gave him a new job. Say new. new. He gave him a new job, a, a new position. He went from slave to he was in charge of the military, kind of the general, to went where he was the one who followed up Moses, one of the all-time greats. Even Moses saw in him a reminder and the, the pressures and the weight of life that he needed to be reminded. Joshua, I'm bringing you up in front of everybody. Deuteronomy 31, bringing you up in front of everybody. Be strong 
and courageous. Be strong and courageous. And in fact, he said, do not fear. And there was the reminder of the Lord, I will be with you wherever you go. Be strong and courageous. So he got this new commission. And in Joshua chapter 5, after he had led them across the river into the promised land, and he goes, and the first, the first obstacle in front of them was Jericho. And so he, he's, he's like, okay, trying to seek the Lord and, and going, how can I be strong and courageous? How can I lead these people strong and courageous? And remember, he goes and, and he meets the, arm, the commander of the armies of the Lord. And you remember what he asked? He said, are you for us or are you for them? And the answer... No. No, you didn't understand me. I said, are you for us or are you for them? And the answer was no. What God wanted them to understand is they had a choice to be on the side of the Lord or the side of themselves. And in that moment, Joshua got a new, everybody say new. new, he got a new battle plan. Oh, I get it. This isn't just about our efforts. This isn't just about what we think or our military strategy or how good we are or how great we can fight, but this is about something new. And God said, I'm going to teach, I'm going to show you, I'm going to build up in you how to be strong and courageous. And so he gave them a new battle plan. Interesting new plan plan for Jer Jer Jericho, right? Get your soldiers, get some guys with some horns, the ark of the Lord, and some more soldiers, and y'all march. Don't say anything, by the way. I, I know there was like warriors, you know. And they march, and they march, and they trust in God. How come? Because they had seen and they experienced and they went ahead and went, okay, we're going to be strong and courageous and we're going to do it God's way. And what happened? The walls came tumbling down and they went in. Alexander White said, the victorious Christian life is a series of new beginnings. Everybody say new. The victorious Christian life is a series of new beginnings. Now, we understood that God had given Joshua some specific instructions for Jericho. Jericho was under God's judgment. Now, I pause here to point you to God's heart because it's hard as we think and we hear some of these things. We were going, Man, that was pretty ruthless or, you know, I, I just don't know what I feel about that or what, what box can I put that in? And I remind you of God's heart. Even when Adam and Eve sinned and fell, did God just kill them instantly? No. He put them out of the perfect garden, but he covered them. And he still allowed them to flourish. At the time of Noah, was it God's heart was like, this is just so terrible, I need to wash this clean. And what did he do? Scripture tells us for 120 years, while the ark was being built, there was a chance to repent and respond back to the gospel. Think about even their ancestors at the time. In Egypt, we, we rush over too quickly that there were how many plagues? There were 10 plagues before God said, that's it. What about plague one and two and three? What would have happened if they would have just said, you're right, God, I'm sorry, I'm wrong, and repented? But they did not. I come back to God's heart. Oh, he gives you plenty of chances. How about Sodom and Gomorrah? When Abraham looked over this whole area and he said, well, what if there's just 50 people that love you, God? And God went, okay, I won't destroy it. And he worked his way down all the way to 10 people in a full area? Can you imagine? And God said, okay, that's God's heart. He's given you every opportunity to repent, to restore, and to start over again. That's God's heart. He 
And yet he ended up just rescuing Lot and his family. So when we see God come towards the area of Jericho, did they have every opportunity to repent and respond? Absolutely. With confidence, I can say yes. How do you know? Even Rahab, the prostitute who welcomed the spies in and welcomed a faith in God, was able to provide for the saving of her whole family when the rest were devoted towards destruction. Wow. So God's specific instructions for Jericho was, I want you to march when the walls come down. The people there are under judgment, so I want you to rescue Rahab. Everybody else, that's the end of second chances. And then all of the things that are of value and worth, they're going to be set aside as a first fruits offering for God. That, that was the thing. It's like God said, I'm going to knock it down. All you've got to do is rush in and carry out what I've told you. And don't take the things that aren't yours because they're God's here. Okay? So they went in and they thought they had this ultimate victory. Yes, they marched. The walls did fall down. They did go up and do those things as far as committing to destruction. They rescued Rahab. But there was one. There was one amongst the body, Achan, who said, mm, I like that. And so remember, he repeated this cycle of sin. He said, I want it, or I see it, I want it, and he took it, and he hid it. And he thought he would, oh, who's going to notice? And he hid it. And so without that knowledge, Joshua sends to the next battle, Ai. And he sends a group up there, and they get completely routed. In fact, Joshua chapter 7, verse 5 says, Their hearts melted like water. It was as if they had one of those moments. They gave everything they got. They thought they were doing it God's way. They thought they were doing everything right. And they fell short. Now what's going to happen? What are they going to do? How are they going to regain the ground that was lost? Now just like the sunrise... And this, this is a picture of our area. This is the picture over the bay. Just like in our area, God is always doing something new. Everybody say new. God is always doing something new. And in this, he gave Joshua and all the people a greater appreciation for God's glory. And in this situation, God gave them a new appreciation for sin and what God saw of it and how God judged it and how God responded to it. And they had a new appreciation of God's blessing when they did things his way. Now we're ready for the response in Joshua chapter 8. Joshua chapter 8 verse 1. How could you regain ground that's lost? Joshua chapter 8 verse 1 says, And the Lord said to Joshua, now I love it, capital L-O-R-D, that's the creative God who wants to have a relationship with me and you. That's Yahweh talking. Ooh, it's going to be good then. <laughs> Do not fear nor be dismayed. Oh, isn't it timely of God? Everybody say, when you need something new. Let me, let me hear you say new. new. How about when you need, in that moment, when you've done all you can and you've fallen short and you need something new, what's the first thing God did? I want to give you some encouragement, some new encouragement. He said, do not fear and do not be dismayed. Oh, thank you, God, for the timely timely encouragement he said take all the fighting men with you and arise up and go to ai okay so we messed up last time we failed last time well god must going to be do something new say new. new he gives us a new chance when we've made our mistakes thank you god 
A new start after mistakes. You know what that really is? God wants to change our focus that we might be strong and courageous. He says, see. Everybody say, see. Now, when he's saying see, he's not just saying with your eyes, just look and see what's going on. He is saying, I want you to see this situation from where God sits, not where you stand. That's a different kind of see, isn't it? I'm not just judging it by what I see. I'm recognizing that what I see is not all there is. I recognize there's almighty God in this situation, so I want to view things by faith by what he sees from where he sits instead of where I stand. Oh, that's important. See, I have given into your hand the king of Ai and its people, his city and his land. God was doing something new. And you shall do to Ai and its king and as you did to Jericho and its king. Only its spool and its livestock, this time, you shall take as plunder for yourself. And we were hard on Achan. And he just wasn't patient. If he was just patient, God was going to allow him to enjoy the blessing and the plunder of what was ahead. But he got impatient. And he missed out. In fact, he opened the attack for the enemy and he caused destruction on his own family. Too many times when we've given our all and we've fallen short, you know what we can talk ourselves into? That I gave everything I can and that's all I could. And so I'm just either going to give up or I'm going to take shortcuts this time. And oh, friend, could I encourage you by the love of God Don't give up and don't take the shortcuts. You could be one step away, one try away from God getting ultimate glory, from God doing something new in you, from God making a new, fresh testimony. How many times, and I need to speak to someone that maybe has has gone through a period of time where it just didn't happen, but then God finally did bring a breakthrough. God finally did bring a breakthrough in something you were striving towards. God finally did bring a breakthrough in something you were were trying to get away from. And instead of losing ground and losing ground and losing ground, God finally allowed you to start seeing some victories. Huh? Oh, yeah. Now you can turn around and go, yes, it was because of you, God. Yes, but you used someone like me, God. You're turning things around. You're doing something New, oh, yes, God, yes, God. And then he gave a new plan. You know, God's not going to show up the same way that he does every time. Uh, My God's a big God. He's not going to show up like he necessarily did in the past. Why? Because he's a big God. He's not, well, I can't put him in a box. I can't say I'm going to sing this, this song and he's going to show up. I can't say that I'm going to get in this area or do that thing that I even did before and he's going to show up. My God's a big God. And most often, to get our attention to be strong, focus on him, and courageous, moving our feet in obedience towards him, he shows up even in different ways than we expect So even though they knew, they were like, okay, so do we get our horns out and do we start marching around this place again? No. Why? Because God did something new. Everybody say something new. Yeah, he was going to do something new. And Joshua had to go back to the well. He had to go back to the source. He had to be strong and courageous and strong and courageous so that he might have victory. I want to read over you Psalm 37, 23, and 24. In fact, it's on the screen. And somebody just needs to preach to your soul right now. Uh, and we're, how about we read it together out loud, all right? This is going to be preaching to you. Y'all going to be preaching to me. We're going to be preaching to people online. It's, it's going to be great. Psalm 37, 23. Let's do it together. Come on. 
The steps of man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not cast headlong. For the Lord upholds his hand. Amen? So you're falling. You're getting short of the goal. You're, again, not making it where you would like to make. Does not have to be the end of you if you continue to be strong and courageous. You continue to be strong and courageous. It's interesting their response. So God's doing this work in them. He's, he's showing them, he's building them up, even in conquering the land, even in doing everything he's promised. I'm showing you how to be strong and courageous. So they have this amazing military victory. They go and set up an ambush. It's a new plan. And they completely do everything that God has told them to do. And they've had complete success. They've actually been able to say, this end of the story was not my end of the story. Failure was not the end of me. And we, we actually made it all the way home this time. I wonder how they would respond. Well, it's important for us to see and to hear. How can you regain lost ground? What can you do? Joshua chapter 8, verse 30. At that time, Joshua built an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel at Mount Ebal, just as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded his people, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones upon which no man has wielded an iron tool. And they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. God wanted something new to do something new in them. He wanted a new priority of worship. Verse 32. And there in the presence of all Israel, he wrote on stones, literally he engraved, a copy of the law of Moses which he had written. And all of those in the town, all of those, uh, all of those gathered, verse 34, and afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, according to all that is written in the book of the law. And there was not a word of Moses commanded, that Moses commanded, that Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel, and the women, and the little ones, and the sojourners who lived among them. So you know what Joshua did? After this great military victory where you would go, let's have a partay. He went straight into, it's because of you, God. It was worship. And he read through all the blessings and the curses. Now, just to get an understanding of this, he opened up the book of the law and says, if you do this, he, he's reading out Deuteronomy, if you do this, you're going to be blessed. You know what everybody did at the end of that? Amen. So it, be, it, it would be so. And, and then they would hear the curses. If you do this, this is going to happen. It's not going to be good. Do you hear that? Everybody say, amen. So be it. Uh, and they went through all of these things. And they went back and they came back to this response of an attention to God's word. I think there's something that we can be encouraged by today. What happens? How should we respond? What should be our first actions when we've lost ground? Well, just like them. Surprisingly, I would say prioritize worship. Prioritize worship, Psalm 40, verse 3. He put a new song in my mouth, a new hymn of praise about my God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. He wants to do something in you before he's going to do something through you. Hello? So don't just start over again. <laughs> Go to worship prioritize worship Hebrews chapter 10 starting verse 23 let us hold fast the confession of our hope so when you're down when you've you've tried to reach that 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 thing or you've tried to get away from that and you've lost ground it's saying don't lose hope that's one of the things that we 
preach and we say and we share and we encourage each other in this time. That's one of the, the reasons that we need to get together for worship. So you don't lose hope. When, you, when yours is out, then you can lean on my hope a little bit. And when mine's out, I can lean on your hope a little bit. And we can keep going for God's glory. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another with love and good works. We need to look for how we can encourage each other along the way. Not neglecting to meet together is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. One of the outpourings of the pandemic has been this times 10, hasn't it? Too many people just got out of the habit of connecting. Oh, but there is power from prioritizing worship. Why? Because it lifts your chin and my chin and says, be strong, have a confidence in the Lord. Be courageous, be courageous, have your feet ready for obedience. And God seems to show up in the life of some, somebody who makes that a priority. He wants new worship, and then he's going to do something new through you. Second thing, engrave God's word on your heart. Engave, engrave God's word on your heart. Why? Because you see it in the life of Joshua and the nation. You know what he did as they focused on God's word? They got some new encouragement. And they got some new wisdom. And they got some new promises. Ooh, I could take all of that new, couldn't you? Couldn't you take some new encouragement, some new wisdom and new promises? Now, I think of the heart of the Apostle Paul as he sat in prison. And you would think he would need some help with a new attitude and a new strength and a new, how, how can I even be ministering to other people when I'm locked in change? And yet he was doing that and he does it today. Philippians 3, 13 through 15. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it on my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. You hear that? There's a straining forward. There's a prioritizing of worship. There's a, oh, yes, I'm going to feast on your word in this moment. It says, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. Like God, it also says, let those of you who are mature think this way. And if any of you think otherwise, God will reveal that to you also. <laughs> I like that prioritize worship, and engrave God's word on your heart. We all fail. We all will fail. But our failure does not have to outscale what we sang about at the beginning of the service. Victory, Jesus. Oh, may in your story and my story, may they hear and see and remember ultimately victory in Jesus there's victory in Jesus see being strong and courageous regains lost ground by turning defeat into victory for God's glory I want to say over you one more time what was said to Joshua Joshua 1 8 and 9 do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. Then you'll be everything to do what's in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. And in those words, let me tell you, sometimes prosperous and successful just means that you get back up. Sometimes prosperous and su successful means that you take the next breath and you keep going for God's glory. Sometimes that means that prosperous and successful is you don't lose hope, even though you've tried a hundred times. Then you will be prosperous and successful. 
And verse 9, be strong and courageous. One more time. Be strong and courageous. There you go. He said, do not fear. Do not be dismayed. And the promise that so many of us have cling to, God said, I will be with you wherever you go. Oh, that's good news for us. When we've, rega- when we've lost ground, it doesn't have to be the end of our story because of victory in Jesus. I want to pray over us if I can. And in, that, in this moment, you may go, ah, boy, God knew. <laughs> and I needed to hear something of that specifically today. And, 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 and if, if, if this just leaned on you extra in this moment, as we bow our head, I just want to pray specifically for you in this moment. So just give me a hands up and put it back down. I want to acknowledge that. Amen. Got that? Anybody else? Got that? I hear you. Lord knows, yes, and amen. Acknowledge also those ones online. And we pray specifically for you in these moments that you can regain the lost ground for God's glory. Be strong and courageous. Oh, Lord, we come to you in these moments. And I pray specifically over my brothers and sisters in this moment that need a touch from you, that need to be reminded of the hope that only can be found in you and how timely your word is. We worship you in this moment. We prioritize your word in our hearts in this moment. We need your encouragement. We need your wisdom. We need your promises. Oh, would you do a work in us in this moment? We've tried on our own and we failed. Oh God, I pray that you would breathe fresh hope in this moment. Just like you did in Jeremiah. Just like you've done in me. In those moments that I want to give up, God, I pray that you would give a refreshing touch of your spirit in this moment. I pray specifically for those that are just overwhelmed by their circumstance right now. I pray that you would give us the faith to see things by where you sit instead of where we stand. And that you would make (laughs) something new happen even this week. Whether it's a new attitude or our new response or even a new breakthrough. This week that we could not do anything but go, yes, praise you God, that could have only happened by you, God. Something new. Oh God, we crave you. God, it would be real easy for us to sit back and crave an answer or a solution to our issue instead of craving you. And I pray that you would plant in us a desire for you above all things. Oh, instill in us, in our community, in our day, to be strong and courageous for your glory. It's in Jesus' name we agree. Amen. Several things I want to remind you of of this week. Uh, One, um, National Day of Prayer is on Thursday. Uh, And so regardless of where you are, I would encourage you to be involved uh, in just praying over our country, our land, our area, the coastal bend, our church, our friends, our family. November the 6th, this, this week. Uh, Also just praying for for several uh, that are going through some tough times. And we've had so many uh, that have, in addition, joined us uh, as we've we've gone along. Uh, And I would repeat several that uh, maybe uh, could be um, prayed over if you would. Uh, There is our Christian leaders in India, and India in general is just going through a tough time. Uh, I've been there myself, and, and so j- the mass of population is making the pandemic uh, just even that much more uh, difficult to uh, work through. And so praying uh, for God's mercy and for God's wisdom, for, for praying for the Perellis family uh, going to California uh, to see some f- family, so praying for y'all. Uh, to Shelby uh, Rose uh, is sick and out of work uh, and dealing with a new baby coming and trying to finish up the school year and really just overwhelmed. Uh, and so pray for her. JC 
uh, with exams and, and those others that are, are uh, that we've mentioned early, we want to pray specifically for them. And so God bless you and thank you for those that are joining online. We did start a new reading plan uh, in the Version Bible app. Uh, it's just a week this time uh, talking about the Holy Spirit. So uh, look for North Shore Family on uh, uh, the the. You version Bible app, join us on that. We'll be starting a new one next week. It's Mother's Day, so giving you a heads up uh, with that. We're going to pause and take just a few moments uh, to talk about how to apply this. So we're going to split off into some groups. Uh, if you're joining us online, there are those questions in the Version Bible app. But if not, uh, God bless you as you go. Uh, and so I would say um, thank you for, for being with us. We're going to talk just for a second. And so 